wanted to know about how much closer are we to finally getting control of the virus once and for all. Joining us now for his take is Tomas Pueo, who is, by his own admission, not a doctor or epidemiologist, but he is a data cruncher who, uh, who analyzes data, and his COVID online posts have had millions of views and have prompted serious discussions over the course of the entire pandemic. His late, latest blog posting is titled, Coronavirus Game Over, It's Time to Start Living Again. Tomas, you write that after the Omicron surge, it'll be, quote, game over, because, quote, after the Omicron wave, we'll be in a world where most people will have some sort of immunity, either through natural infections, vaccines, or both. We now know how, how to get vaccines fast. We should approve them faster for new variants. And we have treatments, too. The value of time for learning has dropped. We know most of what we need to know about it, so the benefits of social measures to stop COVID are much lower. So how are you so sure? Well, I, mean, I mean, one thing we've learned throughout the past two years is, you know, the virus changes, it can mutate, and there's a lot we may not know. We cannot know for sure. Uh, what we need to do is incorporate new data, and when it changes probabilities, adapt. And this is what's happening, right? You have four factors that each one of them alone is a game changer, right? Uh, after the Omicron wave, 90 to 95% of people are going to have some level of immunity. Uh, we also have vaccines, right? They reduce deaths by 90%. Uh, we, we have the fact that Omicron today kills between 50 and 90% fewer people. And we also have treatments like Paxlovid, which might reduce deaths by 90 to 100%. Each one of these is a game changer, but all together, they're like the four horsemen of salvation. And so you would need all four of those to not be true for, uh, uh, for the end of the um, pandemic to not be something that we can uh, foresee in the next couple of months. So you really believe the end of the pandemic, I mean, is it accurate to say you believe that the end of the pandemic is in the next couple of months? Uh, I think it's possible, right? The, if you go back to uh, two years ago, March 2020, when everything was ex exploding, imagine that somebody told you 90 to 95% of people are going to have some level of immunity. Like that reduces the fatality rate to close to what the flu would have been. Imagine that instead of that, you said, hey, there's a treatment for this that's going to reduce this by 90 to 100 percent. Like that would have prevented the, the pandemic a year, two years ago. And so if it would have prevented the pandemic uh, measures, then it should revert them now. And so the one thing that we're not really sure about is what's going to happen with the new variants. But I believe that a lot of the data that we have suggests that if like the next ones that appear are not going to be as virulent as, for example, Delta. You, you write about post-COVID stress disorder. On an individual level, how do you suggest people start trying to return to a more normal life? Because, I mean, the idea of... You know, for me, even sitting in a, I, you know, in New York, I walk by restaurants that are packed at night with people not wearing masks. The idea of going to a party with a lot of people indoors, I mean, it's not something I would choose to do. How do you, was, how does one get over that? So th that's what happens with humans, right? When you were used to a lifestyle, the changing it is very hard. Two years ago, we were used to normal life and then we needed to react very, very quickly to make people understand how everything was going to change overnight. And it took some time for people to realize this. Now we need to do the exact opposite. It is very likely that the, the next two months are going to, you know, what happens in two months is going to be similar to what happens in a couple of years. And so we need to start uh, uh, making people realize this. Uh, so for example, if you watch a movie and you see a bunch of people in a restaurant that you're saying uh, without a mask and you think, ew, well, that is a sign that you probably have uh, PCSD. You need to think, okay, all of these things that I've learned to be uh, uh, scared of, now I shouldn't be scared anymore because COVID uh, is not as much of a risk. That is not today, right? It has to be after the Omicron wave and we need to be cautious because there might be things that happen. But all the data that we have suggests that what happens in two months is probably going to be that COVID is endemic 
And that lifestyle is going to be the same as in a couple of years. You also say it's much harder to stop COVID right now than it was two years ago. Given that, do you think people who test positive should still be quarantining? Do you think those, those people who are quarantining are making a difference in stopping the spread? Because obviously there are a lot of staffing shortages. Yeah, I think there's a few, a few things that, are, that matter here. One of them is during the wave, right? Like this is, again, like the last wave. We need to be cautious here. And then a second one is more, uh, what are our habits from now on? Like two years ago, if you, were, if you had the flu and you stayed at home because of it, people would have looked at you like, like you're lazy, right? Uh, now we know, no, please, if you have the flu, don't come. If you're coughing, please don't come. Wear your mask. So the, there, there's changes in behavior that we need to have just because we're more intelligent about respiratory viruses. But aside from that, we shouldn't assume that tools that the government has developed for a pandemic are still valid for an endemic, right? Lockdowns are valid when you're preventing a wave. But if you have a treatment that can reduce deaths by 90 percent, do you really need them? I don't think so. And so governments have learned for over the last two years to use uh, tools for a pandemic, and they need to learn to give them away once the pandemic is done. And if that's true in a couple of months, they need to get prepared to stop using those tools in a couple of months. Uh, Tomas Pueyo, it's fascinating. I hope you're right. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad to be uh, helpful. Thank you.